name is Maya, and welcome to my channel, Cranley Place, where I'm posting content on scarf style, knot tutorials, and more. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to be notified of new videos, which I'm publishing weekly. Some of you have asked me about this, so in today's video, I'll talk about the Hermes 140cm circle scarves, which frankly, I only noticed recently on their US website. Since I've only seen one design so far, I'll discuss a bit about that and the artist, some thematic background, and my thoughts on potential styling of this format. The artist behind this design is the incomparable Dmitry Rybalchenko. Dmitry R., as he signs his scarves, is a third generation artist with the house. His father is Vladimir Rybalchenko, who signed his scarves Rybal, and his great uncle is Philippe Le Deux. Collectively, this family has dozens, if not verging, into hundreds of scarf designs between them. Some of my personal favorites from Dimitri R. include Magic Kelly, Facetti de Pegas, Offrande d'un jour, and more. But again, he's designed so many beauties for the house. I love how eclectic and diverse his design aesthetic is. He obviously draws inspiration from all cultures. This Claire de Lune design is available as a double-faced scarf. I have a review on that format, which if you haven't seen, be sure to check that out. And now, of course, it's also available in this 140 GM circular format, which I think was introduced in 2021, but I didn't spot this until recently on the U.S. website. I believe this may be the first time Hermes has introduced a circular scarf of this size. At 140 centimeters, or about 55 inches across, this is akin to their typical GM size, but obviously without the corners. I've seen this scarf in at least four colorways, pink, blue, orange, and black, and at least two of them seem to have contrast hems, which if you've been watching my channel now, you'll know I'm a big fan of these just for visual interest. I'll share my thoughts on styling these in a bit, but first I'd like to explore the themes in this lovely design. Equestrian themes are core to the House of Hermes identity, given its start as a saddle and harness workshop in 1837. But Pegasus is no ordinary horse. This is a mythical winged divine horse, and one of the most recognized creatures in Greek mythology. In Greek mythology, Pegasus was an immortal winged horse, one of two children of Poseidon, god of the sea, and the Gorgon, Medusa. One version of the myth is that Perseus and his brother Chrysidor were born from the blood of their beheaded mother Medusa, the Gorgon tricked and killed by Perseus. A more detailed version of the myth said that the two of them were born when Medusa's blood mixed with the foam of the sea. The myth says that Pegasus was born as a winged horse because his father Poseidon had the shape of a horse when seducing Medusa. When Pegasus was born, Thunder and lightning supposedly pierced the sky, establishing his connections to the forces of the skies. The name Pegasus originates in the Greek word for springs, Pege, since supposedly he was born near the springs of the ocean. But he was also associated with waters due to an extraordinary trait of his that he had inherited from his father. Namely, like Poseidon, Pegasus was capable of creating water streams wherever he struck his hoof. At least two famous springs in Greece, both named Hippocrene, or Horse Spring, were widely believed to have been created by the stamp of Pegasus's hoof. The more famous of the two was located on Mount Helicon, the sacred abode of the Muses. Its waters, when drank, were believed to fill poets with inspiration and creativity. Pegasus appeared on Greek pottery, the earliest being Corinthian wares from the 7th century BC. Pegasus was also a popular design on coins, in particular also from Corinth in 6th century BC. 
In sculpture, a famous representation is from the pediment of the Temple of Artemis on Corsera. The myth was also a popular subject in Roman art, especially on engraved semi-precious stone cameos and floor mosaics, where the horse became symbolic of immortality. During the Middle Ages and throughout the Renaissance, Pegasus represented wisdom, poetry, and inspiration. As far as astrological significance, Ptolemy believed that when Pegasus's bright stars rose in the sky, they presaged a time of ambition, heightened sensitivity, zeal, and whimsy. It also was believed to represent refined spiritual power, heroism, and task orientation. In Greek mythology, the crescent moon is said to represent Selene, the feminine moon goddess, symbolizing female empowerment. In Roman mythology, the slender curves of the crescent shape were thought to symbolize the bow used by Diana, goddess of the hunt. In Chinese philosophy, the moon is yin to the sun's yang, showing how the female moon and male sun can perfectly balance each other. The moon in any format is generally considered to be feminine, an empowering symbol that represents female influence, intuition, and kindness, as well as the power that women wield throughout the world. This scarf is a true circle, not an infinity scarf, but literally 140 centimeters or 55 inches of silk twill fabric at its widest. That is a lot of fabric to play with. Now, interestingly, Hermes hasn't shown this style in any other way than a simple drape over the shoulders. And certainly you could wear it like this and call it a day. But how else might you wear it? Again, thinking about the dimensions, this is the same length, at least in diameter, as the other GM scarves. Where it gets a bit tricky is that you no longer have corners on this format or the diagonal length when the scarf is folded on a bias, which for a square GM is about 78 inches. So say you fold this in quarters. The radius is half the diameter, so you'd have a length of about 28 inches, 27 and a half to be exact. I'm assuming that you'd want to keep the more decorative, longer edge as your trailing edge. Here's where I think you'd need either a scarf ring or an elastic band to tie this. It's not a lot of length to work with, but enough to where I think you could tie a side waterfall like this. This is a square GM, but conceptually the knot would be similar. You could also treat this as an infinity scarf, do a basic fold towards the scarf's center line and secure the ends with a scarf ring or elastic. This should double around your neck easily. Another way you might wear this is like a kaftan or sarong style. This Hermes image gives an idea of how much fabric we're really talking about here. Again, because there aren't any corners tying, it could be a bit trickier, but that's where a scarf ring or two, like a shendonker ring or something like it, or even an elastic band could come in handy. Here are some Hermes examples of square GMs, but again, the concept would be similar with the scarf. I could also see two of these tied together, used back to back and secured with a couple of scarf rings at the shoulders and maybe belted at the waist. Wearing as a headscarf could be another option if you like this look. Here are a few examples with the 140 carres. Again, even without the corners, same concept. But where I think this scarf could get really interesting is due to it being a circle and these edges. If you think about folding it in half and gathering in the middle to tie around your neck, the long edges are going to make some pretty interesting ruffles just on their own, given the circle's natural curve. Again, here's an example with a 140 carré, but I think you could do something relatively similar with even less effort using a 140 circle scarf. So there you have it, a bit about the circular scarf format from Hermes, the background behind its mythical theme, and my thoughts on how you might style it. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and let me know what you think in the comments. In future episodes, I'll share other scarf reviews, not tutorials, and more.
so be sure to hit that subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks again for joining me today. Until next time.